Okay, everybody, welcome back. Now we're just going to pick up right where we left off from the previous video, where we had gone through this test on equalities of proportions, uh, comparing uh, different pet owners and the likelihood that they would readopt the same type of pet, comparing those who have a cat, those who have a dog, those who have some other kind of pet. And we found that there is a difference, at least one type of pet owner, the proportion of whom is, is different, um, the likelihood to readopt is different for at least one of these types of pet owners. So we rejected the null hypothesis, which means that it is appropriate to go through the Marisquilo procedure to determine where the difference exists. Now, this procedure relatively straightforward. We're going to go through a series of two population tests, but it's going to look a little bit different from what you would have seen in module 10 when we were actually performing tests on two population proportions. And again, it's because we have a little more information about the entire sample of data here. So what we're going to be looking at, let me just scroll down past our test here. Here we're going to be doing really three types of tests. And the number of tests that you do is reliant on the number of categories that you're working with. So in this exercise, I'm going to be comparing the proportion of cat owners likely to readopt, and I'm going to compare that to the proportion of dog owners. And we say, yes, they're the same, or no, or, no they're, they're different. Our next test is going to be comparing the proportion of cat owners with, oops, with the proportion of others. Are they the same? Is that proportion the same? Yes or no? And then finally, we're going to be comparing the proportion of dog owners with that of others. So we're really just looking at all the possible pairs that we can compare. If we have four comparisons, four different categories, I should say, if we have four categories, we have six comparisons. If we have five categories, it grows. The number of those pairs, of course, is going to grow quite rapidly. So having three actually keeps it nice and simple. So we have just three possible comparisons. Now the test procedure, the test statistic is relatively straightforward. Our test statistic is going to be to look at the absolute value of the difference in the point estimates of the proportion. So P bar I and P bar J those are just going to be our individual point estimates of the proportion. So let me just clear this up here. This is all I need for this exercise. So those point estimates, this is going to be 48 divided by the total. So 48 over 49. So that point estimate is 0.608. The next one, 51 over 77, and that's just going to be 0.662, and other 44 over 112, that gives me 0.039. Uh, 393. Let's keep it to three decimal places for a little bit of accuracy. So those are my point estimates. So for the test statistics for this procedure, all I'm looking at are the point estimate of the difference of those values. The critical value that we're going to be using for this exercise, that critical value for each comparison because the value is going to be different for each of these tests. That critical value is the square root of the appropriate chi-squared, the critical value for some level of significance alpha, multiplied by 
Now here I have those point estimates. P bar i, 1 minus P bar i over n i plus P bar j, 1 minus P bar j over n j. So that is giving us our critical value for each possible pair. Now you can see here that that critical value is going to be different for each one because I'm using those different P bar I's and P bar J's. Those change with each test. Okay, so let's go through our test statistics first. This is relatively straightforward. I'm looking at the difference in these values here. So that's 0 0.608 minus that first one, 0 0.662. So that gives me a test statistic for my first test, 0 0.054. And it is negative, but all I need here is that absolute value. The next I'm comparing cats and other. So I'm gonna look at 0 0.608. And now this time I'm comparing it here, other, 0.393. So that gives me a value of 0.215. Oops. And then the next I'm looking at dogs and other. So for dogs and other, now again I'm coming back here. 0.662 minus 0.393. And that gives me a value of 0 0.269. Uh, 0 0.269. Oh, and my screen has frozen. There we go, 0 0.269. Okay, now, our critical values. A little bit tedious here. I'll, I'll go through the first one for you. So here, the square root of that critical value. So again, we're working with a chi-squared distribution that has two degrees of freedom and I need some level of significance. So here we'll use the same level of significance that we used for the first test. So we'll use the level of significance alpha 0.05. So if I come down here, that level of significance 0 0.05 gives me a critical value of 5.991. So there's 5.991. And then for the remainder of these calculations, I'm using those point estimates of the proportion. So the first one is going to be here. So that's 608. So that's 0 0.608 times one minus 608 divided by that sample size. And so there I'm just looking at cats. So that sample size is 79. Plus, now I'm looking at dogs, right? Because that's my other category that I'm currently working with. So now my relevant information, that point estimate is 0.662 and the sample size is 77. 0 0.662, one minus 662 and the sample size is 77. Now, if we go through and calculate this bit of a monstrosity, here I will have that critical value of 0 0.19. Okay, now we go through the same calculations for each. That critical value does not change. But these proportions will change because of each pair that I'm, that I'm looking at. So in the next one, notice I'm still here with cat, here with cat, but this one was dog, and now I'm looking at other. So the first part of that calculation is going to be exactly the same, over 79, but now I'm taking the relevant information about the other. So that's this one here, 0 0.393 and 112. So 0 0.393, 1 minus, 
and the sample size 112. And that's going to give me a critical value of 0 0.18. And last but not least, 599. And now I'm comparing dog and other, so I need this information here was the relevant information for the dog owners and this information here, the relevant information for the uh, other pet owners. So I'll copy these down, 0.662, one minus over 77, And this one's going to be very close. This is 0.17. Okay, so we have our test statistics. We have our critical values. Our rejection rule, finally, is that if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that critical value, that is what allows us to reject the corresponding null hypotheses. So if I go through, excuse me, if I go through each of these different tests, the first one, certainly that test statistic is smaller than, right? 0 0.05 is smaller than 0.19. Do not reject. The next one, 0.215 is larger than 0.18, so we can reject here. And finally, the last one, 269, is larger than 0.17, so I can reject here. So our evidence supports the fact that the proportion of cat owners likely to readopt is no different than the proportion of dog owners likely to readopt. However, we do have evidence to show that the proportion of other types of animals, the, the, of pet owners with other types of pets, that proportion does differ from both the proportion of cat owners and the proportion of dog owners. Because once more here, we have found that we rejected both of those tests. So that is it. We have found which one of those three proportions uh, to be different. There's no difference between the proportion of cat and dog owners likely to readopt. We do have evidence to say that the proportion of other pets, of owners of other pets likely to readopt, is statistically different from the other two. Okay, so that's it. I say that's it as if that was simple, but it is a little bit tedious. I don't think the calculations are, are too challenging, but there's a lots of room for error because it's tedious calculation, lots of, lots of button presses, lots of room for error. So take your time, get lots of practice. We'll have a couple of more exercises to go through uh, similar types of problems. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.